What would you say to people are your favorite things if you like to eat? Well, you know, I'm always trying to maintain my weight. I love our breakfasts. I always order a pecan waffle, but it's always to me like a dessert, dessert. thing. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite places to eat in all of Reno. And if you've been watching other videos that we've shot before, whether we were talking about dinner places or breakfast places, this is the only place that made the list multiple times and they also do lunch as well. We just haven't done a lunch video yet. So if you're someone thinking about buying or selling a home or is looking for more great information about all things Northern Nevada, by all means, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be notified. We have great videos and content coming out every week and just know that we're here to support you and get you the information you need to know what's really going on about the real estate market and all things Northern Nevada. So today I wanna to introduce Serena and it's a bowed. She made very sure that I said that correctly because we, I think we're probably all saying it wrong for years. And so it is one of the best places in Reno. So I just first wanna thank you for coming on. Well, thank you, Brian, for in inviting me. Yes, and so she is the owner, the operator, it is her show. And so what I always want people to know is, first of all, where it is located is in an area that's considered Old Southwest. It was a little bit different than where most of these restaurants are located. And so what can you tell people about, you know, the history of the restaurant and how you ended up where you are? Oh, that's a long story. Yes. But we'll try to make it as brief as possible. You know, my father, Paul and Adele Abad, they came here from the Bay in 1977 and opened up Adele's mm -hmm. Restaurant and Lounge in Carson. And that was a very charming 1864-year-old building. And so when we, I moved, to Reno in 1991 to open up our Adele's at the Plaza yes. down on Virginia Street. Oh, I remember it well. That went, you know, into hibernation in 2002 when my mom and dad retired. Adele looked at the building, my mom, on uh, 1907 South Arlington, and she fell madly in love with it. It came up for rent. We do not own the property. We right. leased it for 30 years, so it's a long <laughs> lease. We're there for a while, guys. Yeah. She just really saw the potential of that little three-room bungalow. It was, a, of course, um, a home for many years. It's been a lot of things oh, to yeah. a lot of people. I've heard so many stories. I've met so many families. It was built in the late 20s. You know, we went in and my sister-in-law was the interior designer and my uh, nephew and uh, his construction company went in and did the, did the build out. So she saw the charmingness of that being in a quaint neighborhood, being a local place where you could eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner a couple times a week and gather with your families. Well, I try to tell people all the time if they've never been there, it's amazing how much bigger the restaurant is when the weather's nice and you could be on that outside patio area versus in the middle of the winter where sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, it's the house is not overly huge. No. So your capacity to bring people in is definitely yeah. different between the, the types of year. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, I feel like we're like almost seasonal, like at the lake, you know, that you're saying outside is mm -hmm. large and it's amazing how many people have never seen around the Plum Lane side. They just see the Arlington side uh -huh. and they're like, oh, did you just expand? Uh, no, this has been like this for 18 oh, yeah. years. It's a gorgeous corner. Um, we have over 100 seats outside so we can really take care of your larger parties. It's just a great location. I built the fence uh, uh, last year mm -hmm. and people really love that. They created a privacy wall there by the corner because oh, yeah. the fumes and it just got to be a little too noisy. As you see, Plum Lane became a, uh, you know, a, a, almost a commuter. Yeah, well, it's a major traffic the, area yes, now. to get right. to the Northwest because of the spaghetti bowl <laughs> going through so many uh, transitions right. and, and stuff. But, well, I tell people that all the time, like, the place feels completely different if you eat dinner in the evening when the weather's nice versus going there on a sunny day for breakfast, whether you're inside or outside, it's definitely got a different ambiance. And so obviously, you know, you guys had done restaurants and things like this before. I mean, obviously I was guessing this was all intentional to do all these things. At night, it's cafe style. I did go in and remodel, made new changes to the to the colors and to the and to the aesthetics of the of the restaurant. So there is some changes, but it's all lined with rock and roll posters, you know, from oh, the Bay yeah. Area. So people love to come in. Look at all the rock and roll posters that, you know, from Billy Graham days. So it's exciting there. It's really lighted nicely, fireplace. So in the winter right now, it's mm -hmm. running all the time. It's just wonderful environment at night. In the day, it's sunny and bright, small. If you can imagine a three-room bungalow, that's what I call it, a three-room bungalow. And I tell people, like, sometimes I like to just go in there and you can go there by yourself and just yes. sit at the bar. Yeah. You can sit outside. And again, there's now much more parking than there used to be. And whether you're right. on the street or in that parking lot, I know sometimes if you have a smaller car, bring it rather than your big monster truck because it does get a little narrow in there. Sure does. But other than that, I mean, it's gotten so much easier to get to yes. than sometimes it used to be in yeah. the past. And we've paved the, uh, the Arlington third parking lot. So 
it's so much better for everybody, you know, to get in and out. But yeah, you know, the larger vehicles stay outside the parameter <laughs> for sure. You don't want to go in and go around the plum lane exit. No, because it's tight when it you're is. trying to swing around that yeah. corner as far as that stuff goes. I don't even let my delivery trucks come into the parking lot. <laughs> well, I was going to say, because when you, I was looking at it this way, as someone who just eats in restaurants, I've never had to run a restaurant. And I think of how that house is not that big. And I can't imagine there's tons of storage. And when you're trying to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I always just wonder like, where's all this stuff even kept? Because it's not a big place. You know, how, how do you guys even manage all that? Because it just always just say, how do we not waste a bunch of food? Paul is, you know, the, the driving force mm -hmm. behind us, of course. My father, Paul, he was a master chef. He had this vision of the restaurant, of course, with my mother, and she passed away in 2004. So she never saw the fruition of, of her vision. Mm -hmm. But we try to maintain what she wanted. But he used every inch of that back property. Like you see a little house, they're yeah. like, do you live there? No, that's our storeroom, the yellow house that we now have that beautiful <laughs> mural. Uh, we had a local artist paint that. No, we use every aspect. We have walk-ins outside. So yeah, we've uh, pressed the envelope to it. Well, and, and like I said, it's definitely a local place that locals go and I, I always tell people when they come visit or they're coming here thinking about buying or selling a home i try to send them there to try to say hey get off the beaten path go to some of these local places so we send people there all the time you may not know that but i send people that direction because again it doesn't matter and especially back when you guys were open seven days a week there was very few places that you knew you could go any time of day between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. and you guys were always with somebody seven there. Seven to nine back then oh uh, yeah i know Can and you i know imagine you seven days a week you know and again driven by my father you know, he always wanted to be available. That's his That's right. his livelihood. My parents have owned restaurants their entire lives. Yeah. So we grew up in this industry and we mm -hmm. know the, the shortcomings from it. And it's family life. Your family life does get affected because of the workforce. Well, I know, think it just becomes house. part of your social life too, because everyone's coming How in. How do I know you? 100% <laughs> is, is being in there. And it's funny because if it, and as many people as go through there, if I haven't been there for a little while, at the first time you see me, you're always like, where have you been? Yeah. So you, it's like funny how you just sort of know is no different than any other business that sees people come in regularly. You start to learn your people, you get your regulars and, and you get people that are in there and all the time. And every day we get new, uh, new customers. Like last night, you know, Valentine's night celebrating. It was great to see new people saying that they got referrals from Whoever. locals. I right. mean, like lawyers, I get them from the real estate agency. And and that's what we build on is, mm -hmm. you know, we're a local family with a long history of restaurant in town. And uh, I'm the last of the Mohicans. <laughs> if you're someone out there thinking about buying a home in Northern Nevada, but you're nervous and scared about pricing, affordability, and you're just not sure what's going on in the real estate market right now, hit the link. We have a free guide that gets you all the information you need so that you can feel comfortable about what's going on out there, and you can make an appointment directly with me so we can talk to you about helping you feel good and comfortable about what's going on in the real estate market here in Northern Nevada. I eat there all the time, but you're always running around doing your thing. So what would you say to people are your favorite things? If, I mean, I don't know how often you get to eat your own food there, but I'm guessing as much as you're there, you probably do. What would be the things you like to eat? Well, you know, I'm always trying to maintain my <laughs> weight. Georgie Flores, mm -hmm. Jorge Flores, he is our business partner. Mm -hmm. And I have to you know, make sure that he and his wife, Maria, are mentioned because they've been with us over 30 years. They met to, and they married, they have children, they have a grandchild. So they have become a part of the success of our restaurants because they were with us at Adele's and right. Peg's and now of course the Stone House. So he works, you know, endlessly from morning, afternoon and night. So he has learned from the master, Paul, his food is amazing. So you guys, if you come in, we're cooked to order. So if there's any allergies of any kind, yes, we don't have a gluten-free menu per se, right. but we will cook what your desire is. But I love our breakfasts. I mean, we make fresh home homemade hollandaise, every kind of eggs benedict that you can possibly think of, we do. Our griddle is extremely innovative because our French toast is not like what we made at home, regular white one bread. <laughs> I mean, we use ciabatta and it's a different style. It's definitely thick and crunchy and it's, but it's, it's very famous. Omelets. If you're an omelet healthy eater, we have very healthy foods. And that's really what we really use all the healthy ingredients. So when Andrew and I did the video about eating like our favorite breakfast yeah. places, I tell people, usually have a reason you go somewhere like for a specific item. When I go to your restaurant, I am looking at specifically eggs benedict which kind of eggs benedict am i going to have and if i have more than just me and one other person i always order a pecan waffle but it's always to me like a dessert, dessert. thing yes. so you kind of have to share it because yes. i wouldn't want to eat the whole thing but if you break it into nice four pieces it's a total dessert thing what's nice is you can go there with four or six people whatever it is and the variety of food that you can get is crazy so when we were talking about the dinner schedule 
I always order barbecue prawns. That is my jam at your place. But then there's things like where I ordered the peanut butter and jelly hamburger. And I'd eaten at your place for years. And I always thought, this has got to be kind of weird. And I finally ordered it one day. And it is <laughs> so amazing. But like I said, if unless I want to weigh 400 pounds, I'm trying to avoid that kind of stuff. Yeah. But like I always tell people, whether it's fish or salad or all kinds of different things, you can get almost anything in your restaurant. But when, as far as dinner goes, I know there's always specials. So how do you guys decide on some of this stuff? What's going to actually be on this multi-page menu? It is multi-page. Oh, yeah. And it's multifaceted because it... Uh, ap appeals to the young as well as the casual diner as well as the fancy diner so you could come to our restaurant and it will fulfill everyone's appetites oh, yeah. and their desires so we do small plates so we're not a full menu you don't there's no minimum you can order just small plates which is why it's so large is because I'm a small plate girl right when I go out I don't eat a meal I eat small plates mm -hmm. I love variety and so like you said the barbecue prawns that is on the small plate mm -hmm. As far as specials, we like to keep with the fresh ingredients. So right now we're running, you know, Ono, we've been running, you know, sea bass, halibut, and then Georgie, you know, he really has an imagination and we work together on, you know, collaborating different ingredients yeah. and different sauces. Cause my father was famous for his sauces yeah. and that's our restaurant is all sauces. People love coming to the restaurant because you can eat something different every time and never, I think you could eat us you, every day for 365 <laughs> days, you know. You really. totally could. Yeah. I know like, and it makes sense now that you're talking about who your chef is, is that I think paella has been a special off and on for years and it's always multiple kinds of fish you can get. I mean, like that's what I ate last time I was there. Did and you like, enjoy it? Oh, it's, it's always awesome. It's, it's a very like, popular special. My dad, you know, he was a paella jambalaya guy. So these are, a lot of these dishes were stemmed from Paul being behind the line. You know, he, he cooked till he was 82 and a half. <laughs> Still alive, 96. Well, that's what I tell people. Lucky guy. Where can you go eat paella and at the same place get a pecan waffle? Like, that just doesn't yeah. jive. So I keep telling people, you could literally, you, as much as you were joking about it, you literally could go there every day of the week, never eat the same thing. The cocktails we were talking about before, whether yeah. you're a cocktail person and in breakfast, it's the best cocktails you can get. The list, now I'm not a drinker, yeah. but the list of people, I mean, I'm always, they always want to come with me so then they can have their drinks and I can drive them all home. Yeah, that's good. But it's like, there's just an amazing DD. variety of stuff that's going on. So I always felt from an outsider perspective, the one thing I would never want to own is a restaurant because you see them and it just seems like the number of restaurants that can last 20, 30, 40 years yes. is really small. It's a really difficult business. So with all the things we We've been talking about what are some of the things you guys do to stay relevant i think just being here so long and everyone knows your guys names now is part of it but how do you stay relevant as a restaurant well during covid you know it was a lessons a lot of lessons learned the, the, the restaurants that didn't survive is extremely painful oh yeah. you never want people to lose their lives their livelihood and their their family livelihood too the most important thing is to the satisfaction of the customer right, right. so of course, I'm on the floor and I, I'm a very person to personal Absolutely. person. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm constantly in people's at people's table and asking, you know, if they enjoy it. You know, if, very rarely do we get a complaint about the food. Right. It's maybe an undercooked or possibly overcooked, but that doesn't happen often. But people love the variety. So during COVID, it was very difficult to maintain this large menu, which so many people want. Right. I mean, I've, I've said to myself, and my father and Georgie, let's slim this menu down. But we just can't because you love your your right. special. And you know how many chicken dishes do you need? Well, we have three. Could we do one? Of course, but why? You can do it this way and that way. So it's so hard. So I think what makes this relevant is keeping our menu versatile and the fresh fish. I'm telling you, people didn't think that we were known for fresh fish. And when they come in, they're like, you have the best fresh fish dinners. People are surprised at the, at, like you said, the largeness of the menu and how can we maintain the freshness? Yeah. And we, what it is, is that we use that product in almost everything. So that's what we, what we select is items that we can use it in the breakfast, the lunch and the dinner. So it's that uh, ingredient is constantly being. Well, that's what I say to people all the time because that's always that age old question, especially when my kids are younger. It's like, what are we doing for dinner? What are we doing for this? And what's nice is you can go somewhere like your restaurant. The variety is so big that if somebody wants to eat spaghetti and somebody else wants to eat paella and somebody else wants to eat fish, there's not a lot of places that you can do that at. So that's what we and always love. And burgers and sandwiches. Yeah. So at night we have cash dining. Yeah. So like you said, you know, you might want that peanut butter and jelly burger, <laughs> but I want that paella. So it's very, it's, it's an amazing menu. Please try and come, you know, for those that haven't tried it. Right. And breakfast is served till three. So people, you Coming can go side lunch, by right. side. I love eating lunch. So breakfast, breakfast. starts, you know, at eight to three, lunch is 11 to four, dinner's four to eight. So really nobody is 
missing anything. You can just really come any time of the day. Absolutely. So that's what's so nice is being located by the airport. We'll get people coming in, even locals. Right. They'll come down from the lake because we get a lot of lake customers from Truckee, from South Shore, from, from Incline. And they'll spend the night near the airport, but they'll come by the restaurant and they'll eat. And they'll say, yeah, we're heading over to the hotel. And it's so cool that they think of us as often as they do. Well, people need to know it's very centrally located. You're right off Arlington and Plum. So if people don't know where you are, go to the website. It's Stonehouse Cafe. It is super easy to find. And is there anything else you would want people to know about a restaurant that I have eaten at a million times? I love this place. And I just want people to know, like, if you're looking for a place to go. It's a beautiful environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a gorgeous outside. So hopefully in spring, you know, we're, we're out there as much as we can. Bring your families, bring your friends, you know, your loved ones. And, you know, just really enjoy having a nice, the reputation of our family's food. It's it's just gorgeous food. It really is. And make a reservation, especially if it's going to be Large Friday parties. or the week. Yeah, there's if you're going to have more than four people, you definitely should call ahead and make a reservation. Well, in the winter. Yeah. Because we are a small 64-seat house. Imagine that. Right. And then you can sit at the bar any time. So that's a one and done. You know, it's a first come, first serve basis at Absolutely. the bar. So we get a, and I save that. I reserve that for people that do want to eat. It's not a, just a hangout for drinks. It's a place for people like yourself that you just want to get your, your burgers. Swing going. by. Or yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, Serena, thanks for coming on to the show. For those of you guys who are looking for information about the Stone House, we'll put, provide some down below. But you can always go to the website. You can see the menus, photos. It's an amazing place. If you're someone thinking about buying or selling a home here in northern Nevada or someone's thinking about moving here, click the video. Check it out. We've got lots of great information for you.